went by the flea market today and picked up a couple of more old General Electric radios. The one on top is an AM-FM solid-state model from, I believe, 1971. And the one on the bottom is a 65 model, just a AM tube clock radio. A while back, we uh, overhauled a very similar radio along with the solid-state relative. The AM-FM one works pretty good. Although it's basically only good for the stronger local stations. I have a 1980 GE AM FM radio that's actually a better performer, which I'll show you that shortly. And I also picked that radio up at the flea market last week. And the AM seems to be fair, not great, but fair. Here's the AM radio, and as you can hear, it plays, but its performance is not that great, and it's sort of intermittent. One complaint. Call today for... on the side, it came to life, so that tells me we either have an intermittent tube, bad solder connection, or a dirty tube socket. Let's open this one first and see if we can persuade it to work at peak efficiency. Here's the inside of the tube set. As you can see, it has a Japanese filter capacitor in it and lots of cigarette paste in this radio and on the outside of the cabinet, but I think it'll clean up okay. Okay, I replaced the filter capacitors, re-soldered all the tube sockets, cleaned the volume control, cleaned the tube pins, and everything seems to be working except for one little problem. There's a certain section of the tuning capacitor that's shorting out and you can hear what's happening the static and the speaker as I turn I've tried straightening the plates in the conventional manner even ran an ohm meter check and nothing seems to be shorted but obviously something is shorted I could just let it go but I don't want to let it go because it's not supposed to be like this I want it to be right Okay, I've disconnected the antenna lead from the tuning capacitor, which was providing a low resistance path to ground, and now I'm detecting a short. I have one lead hooked to the antenna lead terminal, and the other meter lead hooked to the frame of the tuning capacitor, and as you, as you can see, I'm getting infinite resistance, which is what I should get. Now watch what happens when I turn the tuning control. When I get to the part where the static begins, you see we have resistance, which means we have a bent plate. And the only way to really solve that problem is to carefully flex each plate back and forth until you find the one that's shorted, and then you can carefully bend it so it doesn't short, and that can be a tedious process. I've tried bending and flexing the plates and none of them really look out of line so I bet what happened is we probably have a little bit of cigarette paste down in here that's providing a conductive path so the only way I know to do to fix that is possibly run an emery board or some sandpaper between each plate and try to get the obstruction out and then maybe that will solve our problem Okay, I think I found the problem. It, uh, the trouble appears to be one of the stationary plates here. I bent this one back a little bit. And now the trouble 
seems to be gone away. I'm tuning through the range and there's no continuity. So let's solder the antenna wire back and see what happens. Okay, we're back together. And at one point I had the tuning capacitor problem fixed until I put it all back together and now it's shorting out again, but not taking this all apart right now. And basically all this is is a turd anyway, so... Hot dogs are higher in fat and have preservatives called nitrate. It receives the local stations just fine, so that's all I'm really worried about. It's a condiment. Ketchup or... Since the show began, what, 20 years ago? How long has it been? I don't know. We're going to bring about the destruction. See, there's our dead spot. Right in there. Sufficient. The procedure is the same. It's, there's no misunderstanding the format. Maybe one day I'll take this back apart and clean out clean out all the cigarette paste and I'll try again to straighten that tuning capacitor out. But right now, as far as I'm concerned, this one's done. Okay, earlier in this video I told you that I had a 1980 GE that, for the exception of having dirty controls, the FM was hotter than the 71 GE that I just showed you. And here's the 1980 radio. As you can hear, the volume control is staticky. And this band switch is flaky, so let's open it up and clean it. Here's the inside of the 1980 GE. It has a 45 ohm Foster speaker. Looks like a 1980 date code. And there's the chassis. This thing was made in Singapore, by the way. And even though by the 80s most companies had gone to using a step-down transformer to power the radio chassis, uh, apparently GE still liked to use dropping resistors. That's what that big white power resistor is. It drops the 120 volts AC line voltage down to a low voltage that the chassis wants to see. In fact, I remember several years ago taking apart a late 80s LED digital GE clock radio that still used a dropping resistor. East Mississippi and okay, West I Alabama. cleaned the volume control and the uh, band switch with this stuff. Works a lot better now. Now let's do an FM band scan. It is here, so come check out the 2014. That's all to help Mississippi's children. Work. Pretty Boy Incorporated in conjunction with the worst behavior. There's an oldie station about 90 miles away. Hey, Coach, Coach Green, there's a future there. Come get yours during a special truck month event only at Griffiths Motors, Philip Terry. Don't wait, just go to their website. It's one way to fall in love when you meet her. If you get the chance, you better keep her. There's a local top 40 station. Meridian and I have been buzzed. Pretty much everything below this point is either religious or public radio. Autoplex.com For 2016, here's... Uh, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think... Um, uh, again... Yeah, this one's got a pretty decent FM. Let's try AM. Yeah, let's kill the light. One, come to Premier Auto and check out the vehicle. The whole thing stinks to high heaven where he walks in to do the... Just 
call the WMER Community Connection at 601. Yeah, AM's about average. So. Like I said, I don't know what they got. But all in all, this is a decent little radio. Oh, guys, hello. See a trick for a Taliban. Yeah, the local gangster station. Just for comparison, here's the 71 GE tuned to the gangster station. And here's the 80, 80 model. So either this radio is sick or it's just not as good a performer. AM performance on the top radio seems to be about equal to the bottom radio. Actually, this top one may be a little bit better sounding on AM. Here's the inside of the 71 GE AM FM set. I think this model might have still been assembled in the USA, but as you can see, there are a lot of foreign parts, including the speaker here. However, it wasn't long after this model that GE radio production shifted to Singapore and then later Malaysia. Maybe one day we'll open this up and try to improve its FM performance a little, but we're running out of time for this video, so we'll have to call it a day. But I gave you more for your money in this video. You saw not one, but three GE radios today. Hope you enjoyed it, and more to come later. means you, you, and you. We must figure out some plan to keep from working, if we can. I got it. Let's pretend that we are sick and all get into bed. We'll have a nurse to wait on us and also be well fed. We don't have to work. We don't have to work. La 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 la. la. We don't have to work. We don't have to work. We don't have to work.
Not work if you are blind. Go home and play, and never mind. We don't have to work. We don't have to work. Thank <laughs> you. 
Three blind mice, eh? 